What's going on, people? Yeah, I'm not going to move the lamp. It's been a few days. It is uh, Friday, the 4th of uh, September. How are you all doing? I've been doing okay, and at the same time, kind of uh, <clears throat> coping, just like I think a lot of you, the world is, you know, because things are just are strange and say staying strange. But I want to check in and acknowledge a couple of um, pieces of music that came in this week. That always prompts me to go ahead and check in, although I have, just like I said, <clears throat> have not really felt like making videos. So, But um, yesterday I received this in the mail, and I want to thank you. I'm pretty sure this is from you, Calvin. Calvin Johnson. The guy who uh, started uh, K Records up in Olympia, Washington. This is Adrian Orange and her band. This is not a new release, um, but it's, I just gathered that Calvin um, just uh, wanted me to have this. It, it, it feels friendly. Now, um, I've seen beat happening. Calvin, I've seen you, so you obviously watch my videos. So, um, I'm really glad that I took the time and had the interest to follow what was happening with music and and youth culture. And by that I mean how um, for me, you know, at my age, it, you know, getting out of high school in the early 70s and being heavily into music, you know, I was deep into jazz and prog when the punk thing, quote unquote, exploded. And I absorbed that. And I've just continued to this day to just be open, interested in what's happening at the moment. So what I'm saying is when what I consider just really honest music just continued to proliferate from people out of punk, post-punk, where the focus wasn't on abilities, you know, like schooled musical abilities, but more about personal expression. I'm glad I followed that because there is a lot to be said for some of those artists. Neutral Milk Hotel come to mind. Beat Happening with Calvin Johnson. I happen to see him play, see them play live. I forget who they played with. And it was just kind of magical. It was really good. It was just, um, I think I came up and spoke to you, Calvin, afterwards. I think so. Um, so what I'm getting at is, while at the moment, the way this music hits me is like, this is not where I'm at right now. Um, there's an Afro, bit of an African thing going on here. But the primary thing is this person's um, personality, Adrian Orange, his personality. <clears throat> so it's, I'm glad to have it. And I know that there'll be a time when I can put this on and it'll be like, yeah, I'm catching this because I have some other things still on the K label. I can't think of oh, right now. Uh, I can see the picture in my head. I said, CD. So thank you, Calvin, very much for sending this to me. I do appreciate it. Adrian Orange and her band didn't know about it. In the background, if you may or may not hear it, <clears throat> is one of three CDs that I've received from a fella by the name of Mark Hines. Um, he goes by MDH and also he's also gone by Ottoman Vampire. And he sent me three CDs. This one CDR is an Ottoman Vampire, The Edge of Night. This stuff is instrumental based samples. Um, I like stuff like this a lot. I don't sound like this at all, but I work somewhat in this area maybe. 
but we're of similarities where we're, you know, some of this stuff is beat oriented and some of it is more um, atmospheric. Um, he sent me this. I think this is the very latest thing with uh, just this picture. It's CDR, but it says 2020 Green Things by I'm doing MDH yeah what I have on in the background is the one that hits me the best right away is this one MDH clearance and um, turns out we are friends on Facebook I have so many connections so I'll try to remember to give you the link so you can get this I like this I particularly like the way this starts Danny M the first track is um, I'm gonna stop this, I'm not gonna play it because I just recently received um, notice that one of my uh, uh, older, like years old uh, video was just um, blocked or silenced by YouTube because I'm playing a bit of some, I forget the music. But uh, I like this uh, instrumental. The first one, like I say, made me think of um, this term that people, I don't like genre terms. I, I don't, it just, after a while, they just get on my nerves. But vaporwave, which to me is again where it's like, well, it seems like it's more a marketing thing or more of a, I don't know if it's a generational thing where people need to have a need to call things something new where it's really just ambient music, you know, with beats and some not with. But that's what. The first thing made me think of is that term, but not all of it is like that. I, I do like this stuff. Thank you. Um, so my chest has been bugging me, you know, not like a heart attack, but this like sore, you know, like maybe I'm catching a cold from sleeping under the fan or something. So I've been waiting for that to just like um, finish its course, but it's like been a couple of days, so it's annoying so when I move here it's like it's the, and you feel it I can feel it there it's sore it sucks it'll you know it'll go away or it won't you know that's kind of how you know it seems like you know what the body's gonna do is what it's gonna do but that's part of been um, where I've it's like um, just been like sitting around you know convalescing is that the word <laughs> um, but I've really been listening to some of my favorite music of all time, Jansen Barbieri Karn, um, Beginning to Melt. This is still not on, on vinyl. It would be fun to have it on vinyl, although really, digitally, it's the way to go. I ordered this right away, so I got a, it's, it's autographed by everyone, Jansen Barbieri Karn, and also Stephen Wilson, who plays on this. This is one of my favorites by them. I've had that playing. Uh, I want to remind you before I forget, this is Bandcamp Artist Day, first Friday of the month. So the majority of proceeds of all sales on Bandcamp go to the artist today. I have two new releases uh, digitally. Um, I put a new cover on Strength. And I, I, I recommend these. I love these. And then my newest one, DHX decided to use that collage. Both of these are collages of mine. I'd love to get those out on vinyl, but I'll leave my a link. Um, grab this music, it's good. But Suzuki 7 1, this takes me back to when I was working in Japan for a summer in 94. So that's where I bought it. And this is just really, really good techno ambient. Uh, the re there's a remix on here by The Orb. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, it's just awesome. I've had that playing. I played a bunch of stuff and put stuff away. This is out to play. I haven't played it yet. Archie Shep and Bill Dixon Peace. I was just thinking about this album, thinking about Archie Shep in particular. And um, so I'm going to be putting this on after I get off. Last album I played last night is a, what you would call a cheap heater by Barry Miles & Co. Sky Train. This is Fusion 
and um, it even gets into like they have a he has a, a, a nice horn section on here so at times it reminds me a little bit of uh, maybe Don Ellis or something really good arrangements um, Barry Mouse can be a bit noodly on some of his uh, solos he can play and so it's interesting how as I was just listening to some of the solos like well hmm, you're repeating yourself here man do you think somebody's hearing that right you know don't phone it in played this last night uh, I'm gonna pull it out because it is a neat record boards of Canada but I believe they're Swedish they're from Sweden Gail Gadi this is a repressing of this this music is slightly spooky uh, but really more kind of like uh, hmm kind of like um, old photographs that's kind of the feeling I get from some of these really a lot of their stuff almost nostalgic but um, but more like it's like it's reminiscent and not it's just really kind of fuzzy I really like Borch Canada I got into that last night Here's something I've listened to over the last couple days. Dope Smoker, Sleep, and I love this stuff. They've put this out a number of times and it's a very interesting story behind the album. How when they got signed to London Records and that whole fiasco, how it eventually came out because it's really a one it's a one piece of music that's 50 minutes long, basically. And so they have to break it up. This is the green splatter. It, it really is killer. And um, it is all about uh, Caravan. With bong in hand. Yeah. Sleep. Now I uh, before COVID hit, they were they came through, and I dang it did not make the effort to go, and I do feel kind of regretful about this now. This is really good. Sleep's dope smoker. Speaking of spoken word, which I don't you know often give you know spend much time with, but I just happened to pull this kind of forgot I had it the mind of Gil Scott Heron started to listen to um, which one did I go to in particular the New Deal and it was like this was made back in 1978 and it is completely relevant today which is pathetic and yet at the same time the thing about this along with Brian Jackson's music the delivery is really potent it's really something so you can see why Gil Scott Heron was you know um, preserved on on vinyl really strong I hear the news that Yukihiro Takahashi from originally of Yellow Magic Orchestra had br had a brain tumor operation recently and so I am hoping that he recovers you know we're all up and getting up in age but I was playing this as album What Me Worry from 1982. This is just, again, one of my favorite albums. Just everything all through it about it, including the guests on it. Bill Nelson, Zane Griff. Uh, notable stuff they do in here. I hope Takahashi makes it. I do. You know, it's on a bit of a, my boys, Jansen and Barbieri. I love their stuff. This is Dolphin Brothers. Catch the Fall if you've never caught this album from the 80s that they did. One album, it's just killer. Really atmospheric and just really wonderful writing. Steve Jansen seems similar to his brother David Sylvian. I've been playing some dope shit, you know, Masabumi Kukuchi. I'd love to get more of his record, Susto. This is one that Miles Davis gave his... Uh, um, Seal of, seal of approval to because it's doing the ostinato 
repetitive thing that uh, Miles really put a stamp on when he went electric. And, and this is just has Miles Davis all over it in a real good way. This is real good. So thank God for the music. You know, I'm missing gigging. Oh, that reminds me that I'll get the link and put it here, but there, through the Kennedy Arts Center, uh, a performance of the dance that I was commissioned for is online. Uh, moving Truck, or the Trucking Company, and so you can see the dance and you can hear my music, and it's, what you'll hear the music the way it is presented in the dance, which is remote, like basically on... <clears throat> A remote sound system so um, then I always want full fidelity but you hear what they hear it's playing on this boom box basically in the yard as the dancers dance but I didn't even know that was happening but Laura Simpson who is this is her deal dancer who is originally from I forget not Omaha but uh, ambitious woman obviously and I'm really happy to have been to be involved with this you know and so that's another outlet for my music. Um, and I was going to bring up something else here. But I'll wait to the next video because this is going to take a while to upload. Okay, I hope you're all doing okay. Let me know how you're doing. I'm doing okay. Going to be all right. <clears throat> going to be all right. These are weird times. That's all I'm going to say. Just things are really, really, really weird. <clears throat>